This tutorial is a project of nonprofitaccountingbasics.org, a free resource developed by the Greater Washington Society of CPAs Educational Foundation. Our goal is to encourage accuracy and accountability to help smaller nonprofits successfully manage and sustain their organizations. Hi, I'm Bess Hamilton Foley. Aligning income and expenses helps organizations to understand their business model and to determine whether activities will have a surplus or need to be subsidized. For example, you can only know that ticket sales and sponsorships cover only 40% of the cost to mount a theatrical production if you have aligned the relevant income and expense to create a profit and loss for that program. This can be helpful in making a case to funders. In addition, recording receivables when they are promised and payables when they are incurred gives you a more accurate real-time picture of your organization's current financial position. In addition, recording receivables when they are promised and payables when they are incurred gives you a more accurate real-time picture of your organization's financial position, which includes all committed revenue and expenses. So how do you do this? Balance sheet accounts. Balance sheet accrual accounts are used as temporary holding accounts until the time is right to move them to the P&L. Our first accrual concept is receivables, which is an asset account on your balance sheet. In this example, the organization earned the income before the cash was received. Accrual accounting allows the revenue earned for program services during period one to be recorded as receivable income when earned, even though the cash payments did not arrive until period two. When the payment is received, the cash asset is increased and the receivable asset is reduced income is not affected. Next, we'll talk about prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses is also a balance sheet asset account. Expenses incurred during period one may pertain to period two. Typical prepaid expenses might include things that your organization purchased for future use, such as merchandise inventories, supplies, brochures promoting events that will happen next year, or payments your organization has made for goods or services that have not yet been received or used, such as insurance premiums that could be refunded if they were canceled, or deposits for a future conference you might be planning to attend. Using accrual accounting, these expenses are held in the prepaid expense balance sheet account. As shown in the example, the prepaid assets are reduced or converted to expenses at the right time via an adjusting journal entry. Cash is not affected. Next, we'll talk about fixed assets. A fixed assets is on your balance sheet, and depreciation expense, which is related, is a P&L account. A fixed asset is a long-lived investment in equipment, furniture, fixtures, building improvements, etc. As shown in the example, a fixed asset is acquired at cost, but it is depreciated, that is, the cost is spread over the useful life of the asset. A regular journal entry incrementally reduces the fixed asset value through using the accumulated depreciation balance sheet account and increases the depreciation expense in the P&L. Please note and I'm very passionate about this. Although it is a non-cash expense, it is important to include and fund depreciation in your operating budget. Depreciation expense that is funded by cash revenue in a balanced or surplus budget will increase cash, which can be set aside to replace the fixed asset when it is depleted. Next, we'll discuss payables, which is also a liability account. If bills are sitting on your desk until you decide to pay them, it is more difficult to determine how much is currently owed. Seeing a full list of payables facilitates better cash flow management. Using accrual accounting, vendor payables, payroll liabilities, credit card charges, etc., 
can be recorded as expenses when they become owed in period one, see the middle column in this example, even though they may not be paid for until period two. When the payment is made, cash is reduced and the liability is reduced, expense is not affected. Now we are on to deferred revenue, which is a liability account on your balance sheet. Funds may be paid to your organization during period one for services that will be delivered during period two. For example, the purchase of next season's concert series tickets or payments for tuition for future classes. These payments should not be recorded as income until they are actually earned. In some cases, the organization may be liable to return funds if the activity is canceled. In this example, advanced payments are parked in the deferred revenue liability account. The liability is converted to income at the appropriate time via a journal entry. The liability is reduced and income is increased. Cash is not affected. Next, we'll talk about restricted contributions. Restricted contributions are shown both in your equity accounts in QuickBooks, or as we refer to them in the nonprofit parlance, net assets. When contributions promised or received during period one are restricted by the donor for period two, or restricted by the donor for a particular purpose that will not take place until period two, the funds may not be used for period one operations and must be accounted for separately from unrestricted. In our example, when the time or purpose restriction is satisfied, unrestricted income is increased and restricted income is decreased via the journal entry. Please note, restricted amounts that remain unreleased at year end are carried over for release in a future fiscal year. Future releases must be taken into account when constructing the subsequent year budget. Speaking of budgets, let's talk about accrual budgeting. Now that we are using accrual accounting, we have to prepare accrual budgets. An accrual budget allows you to align related sources of funds, i.e. income, and uses of funds, i.e. expenses, during the budget period. That is the budget by activity. The net income by activity shows how much subsidy is needed to support each activity. Again, this is where you can use this information for your funders. In addition to direct expenses, each activity should include a share of indirect or common costs. Those are items that, need, that are needed to run the organization, such as insurance, rent, telephone, staff salaries, stuff like that. Accrual accounting does not mean you should abandon concern for cash. Inflows and outflows by month should be estimated in an accrual budget and used to create cash flow projections for operations. So you will want to spread the budget totals twice, once for the activities for your business model and once by month for your cash flow. For a comprehensive cash flow projection, you will need to add other non-operation changes in cash, for example, capital purchases, your fixed assets, payments of loan principal or prior period payables, receipt of prior period receivables, and use and replenishment of your line of credit or your operating reserve funds. In conclusion, I hope you will consider using accrual accounting to achieve better understanding of your business model and your financial position. Thank you.